In the latest Victron Connect update, there are a number of key features now available. These new features are aimed at professionals to make setting up, configuring and firmware updating a Victron inverter charger system a lot simpler and all within the app. Please note that updating the firmware as well as the configuration of our inverter chargers is to be carried out by trained professionals only. To do this you will require an MK3 USB dongle and an RJ45 network cable. These features work on Windows, Mac and Android phones. Unfortunately it's not available for iPhones because they don't have a USB connection. If you are wanting to connect using an Android device, you will need an additional OTG cable to convert the USB cable from the MK3 USB dongle. If you are a Mac user, you can install the Victron Connect app and there is a link in the description below for a video how to do this. We will use an Android phone for this video. Once plugged in, Victron Connect will retrieve initial simplified data from the VE bus device. First, I'll show you how to do a firmware update. You can see on the overview page what the MultiPlus is doing. Enter the settings page via the cog at the top right of the screen. You will receive a warning as this app update can change important settings. In this example, we select enable settings. You will need a password to proceed and you will be given this in your Victron training or by a distributor. Enter the password and click Done. Victron Connect will now retrieve all the settings and firmware details from the MultiPlus. Previously, to update a VE bus device's firmware, you were required to use the Windows software VE Flash and download the relevant firmware files. You are also required to activate the firmware mode manually on the device using the rocker switch. With this latest Victron Connect update, these time-consuming steps are no longer required as the process can be completed using only the app. In the settings screen, click the three dots at the top right of the screen. Select Product Info. Here you will see the Product Info screen and you can see there's a new firmware version available. We recommend you update to the latest firmware when installing and commissioning a new system troubleshooting or when adding a new feature within a system. Once up and running, a stable system should be left with its current firmware version and updating it is not required. In this example, we click the update button. The software will automatically find the latest VFF file relevant to the VE bus device. Select the file. A warning screen will appear informing you about how all the configurations will be lost after the firmware is updated. If you're a Victron trained engineer, an installer or a dealer, click the update button. Victron Connect will now transfer the latest firmware to the MultiPlus. This will take approximately a minute to complete. Once it's updated, a firmware update screen appears with the latest version displayed. Click the continue button and remember the settings and any assistance will need to be updated. There is a detailed guide linked in the description below how you can update the firmware within a three-phase system from the Victron Connect app. The relays have clicked off and then we're in firmware update mode. Click the back arrow at the top left of the screen to return to the settings page. Let me show you the other new feature configuring the product. Let's go to general settings. In this screen you can change the system frequency. If the current should be overruled by the remote panel, the dynamic current limit option and if you want to enable the battery monitor. Click the back arrow at the top left of the screen to return to the settings page. Under the grid section this is what you see. In this screen you can change to accept a wide input frequency range as well as the UPS function. You can also see the country grid code assigned to the device. In the inverter screen you can select the ground relay and enable AES as well as power assist. The charger screen allows you to enable or disable the charger within the MultiPlus and change the charge curve in relation to the type of batteries installed. 
In the AC input control screen, you can enable and configure the conditional AC input option. When disabled, the inverter charger will connect to the grid or generator when available. Enabling AC input control makes the device purposely ignore the grid and the settings let you define under which high load and or low battery conditions it should connect to the grid. AC input control is typically used to prioritise using battery or solar power or in countries with very dirty grids full of spikes and sags. In VE Configure, this feature was called Ignore AC Input. Within the Help and Manuals menu, there are a series of comprehensive guides, manuals and frequently asked question documents. There is also a web link in the description below about this update and the web page goes into comprehensive detail about each option available.